Hello friends, so some lovely strength building and core building yoga now for a nice little 20 minute insert into your day. You can uh, do a stretch beforehand with the morning yoga if you like, but if you haven't done so, here's a nice quick opening up the body, breathe in, sweep the arms tall, arms in line with the ears. Now rock your way over the heels to the point you can actually tuck, t turn up your toes. Get nice and tall. Now start to bring your belly in slightly. That will bring your hips over the heels. And then finally the arms in line with the ears. So you're in a perfect straight line. Get as tall as you can. And then on an exhale, slight back bend as you bring your elbows slowly, slowly down. Listening to any delicious crunchy noises your shoulders want to tell you about. Oh, that feels nice slowly down. Going to soften the knees, sweep it up. Exhale, elbows wide, a little bit of an arch. Oh, that sounds so interesting. And sweep it in. And exhale. Oh, open out. Lovely. One more time. Sweep it up. This time, instead of having that nice Pulling back, we're going to fold forward. So tuck the chin, tuck the elbows and trickle down, down, down the vertebrae one at a time. Soft knees, have a little bit of a sway. Nice and relaxed. And from here, we're going to walk our hands forward into a downward dog. If this is too much, feel free to just really soften the knees and lower down as low as you like, but if you've got a little bit of hamstring give, then you straighten up, but you don't have to have your heels to the floor. In fact, you rarely do. What you do want is some alignment. So um, you want to push back into your fingertips so that your ears are in line with your arms and you can have really soft knees, soft as you like, um, hips, Hit, well, feet hip width apart or wider if you want to have a little bit more give and just start treading the feet. Now, personally for me, I love going up onto the balls of my feet and then going down because I love the foot stretch. That might not be the case for you. So just tread and ease and find what feels nice in the body. Nice. And then we're just going to walk our feet towards our hands Till we're dangling over it as I said you can have knees soft as you like and then just hold those elbows and have a little sway if you like you can make a cradle with your hands tuck it behind the back of your head oh that feels good actually mm. lovely from here we're going to rise up into a nice um, flat back so you have semi straight legs hands to thighs and then press your chest through those shoulders so the shoulders pin back the chest is moving forward your bum is going the opposite direction so you're elongating the spine head crown of head straight and flat and then on the next exhale oh, soften and fold and dangle nice and loose and relax now crunch in the tummy tuck the chin and we we'll slowly bring it up as you come up, roll back the shoulders and shrug it out. So we're going to begin with some nice warrior poses, always good for strength building in the lower legs, which in turn is really good for your back, lower back. So we'll get into classic warrior two. So heel to instep alignment, sweep the arms wide, Exhale, shrug the shoulders back and down so you've got nice pinned back shoulders in a straight line. Check one hand and the other. We're quite often a bit like that, so get as aligned as you can. Down to the legs. We're going to pin that knee back towards the toe, the little toe. So the tendency is to want to bring it inwards. We need to press it open. So you're pressing it towards that little toe. Still get those arms shrugged open. Now, the next thing, because just holding a pose is often 
uh, enough for strength building. Um, going to get a slight pelvic tuck as well. So just tuck that pelvis upwards. Um, that will you feel the buttock engage there. Now, <laughs> as if this is not enough, we are going to try and squeeze the thighs together. So it makes you push your feet hard into the floor. You can literally grip the mat or floor with your toes and then just squeeze those thighs together nice and strongly gripping with the floor don't worry about shakes shakes are always good so really oh and don't forget the pelvic tuck crunching it all in lovely and release for a moment breathe in reach the arms above exhale release this is just to loosen out the shoulders for a moment breathing up exhale release now, I didn't say move, so I'm going to open the arms wide and now with your front fingers, start reaching, 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 reaching as far forward as you can. Hold it there. Oh, yeah. And now we're going to bring this other hand and we're going to reach it in line with the ear. And then bring the hands so they're face, palms facing each other. And it's like you're trying to do the most amazing football save. It's like, yeah. Okay, now don't forget, now make sure you're bending into that front knee. Obviously the knee doesn't extend beyond the ankle, but also don't forget to push through that back foot. Push through the front foot, you can feel the every muscle in the body is engaged. Squeeze those belly button muscles in. Squeeze the pelvic floor. Squeeze the buttocks. Everything helps. So keep reaching and shaking. And then with that top arm, open yourself wide and release the arms and then just relax out of that stance and have a little break so your toes are facing forward slightly toes slightly in and we're just going to have a little little stretch so breathe in reach up nice and tall exhale bring hands to the waist leading with the chest first crunch up that belly button straight back just coming forward to the straight back you can have a little soft bend in the knees that's fine if you don't if your hamstrings don't want you to be rigid and oh that's nice and now open your arms wide in an aeroplane to add a little bit of weight <laughs> so try and rock your weight back into those heels and Keep the belly button pulled up so you're as flat backed as you can. And with those arms, if they're feeling a bit droopy, squeeze the shoulders together. Crown of head facing front. And exhale, soften, soften the knees and just have a little dangle and a sway. Let all the tension drain out of your body. Oh, that feels so nice. That's nice, that's nice. Okay crunch in the tummy bring hands back to hips slowly coming up shrug those shoulders back down oh join the other side so now turn the other toe so that you have the heel to instep alignment by the way you notice i don't specify right or left just choose your favorite if instruction videos always start on the right but I think it's kind of nice to mix things up. So just whichever feels right and then just do the other side. So have knee over heel, adjust your back leg as feels right. If it feels too wide, just bring it in a little bit. And then when you're comfy, we'll bring our arms up and then shrug the shoulders back and down. So they're really, really open chest. Um, and which is really good incidentally um, as a counterbalance to all that crunching, texting. So shrugging those shoulders back, having a really open chest is in, is really good stretch in the first place, which is why it also is hard work. Um, Rebend into that front knee. So we're now going to think about bringing that knee towards the little toe side. So you've actually got to press it open a lot more than you realise. And you're going to start pushing down into the back foot and pushing into that front foot and now squeeze those thighs together oh don't forget there's a little pelvic tuck as well and as you tuck the pelvis you'll feel it in that inner thigh so tuck that pelvis squeeze in the belly shrug those shoulders back <laughs> knee 
towards the little toe. And now squeeze those thighs together, squeeze the shoulder blades together, squeeze the thighs together, squeeze the belly button, squeeze up the pelvic floor, squeeze the buttocks. It's easier to squeeze everything than just one thing. And just feel really strong and powerful. Lovely. And now. We're just going to start reaching forward with that front arm, reaching forward, reaching forward. That's getting the length in the spine. And then when you've reached as far forward as you can, we're going to turn that, flip that palm, reach it forward. Palms facing each other, save that bowl. Get that, make sure you've got that knee of heel alignment. Drive the back foot into the floor as you drive your fingertips forward. It's good if you're shaking. Try not to let this shoulder come forward. You want to pin that back, turn that chest. That's much more challenging. So if you're feeling challenged, you're doing it right. <laughs> and don't forget the pelvic tuck. I'm sure there's more I could tell you. <laughs> squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then with that top arm, use it to bring yourself back open. Shrug those shoulders back and down. Once more, turn the toes inwards. This time, Release it, shrug it out. We're going to do a little bit of goddess. So this time, swivel so your heels are now inwards and your toes are out. And we're just going to sit. Feel it all opening out here. Get a little pelvic tuck. Oh, now that alone is strong enough. Find whichever height is, you can feel it, but it's not too much. Okay, so you just find the level, you sit as high or low as feels right for your body, but don't forget that pelvic tuck, that is going to bring your spine and tailbone facing down and to the floor. Right, so this alone, it's enough, isn't it? So <laughs> bringing those arms open, bring those arms up. Get, so what we're going to do is push your fingertips as tall as you can and push your feet deep in the floor. So you're trying to, as you rise upwards in the top body, you want the lower half to sink lower. So you're getting really stretched. And now bring those arms into a cactus. So you've got shoulder and elbow aligned. Pin those hands slightly back. I'm jigging slightly because it helps. It's strong, isn't it? Strong, yeah. And then use your buttocks to squeeze yourself back up. Oh, lovely. Can you feel that? And then heel toe, feet back to centre. Lovely. So that starting stretch, we're going to do a little bit of lunging just to work some of the other muscles in the legs. So just take a step forward and um, it's wise to have a wider stance than hip width in that it makes you feel more stable. Bend that front knee slightly with the back foot, take it back so that your heel is off the floor. Um, and you want, the tendency is to have a really arched lower back. So you want to tuck that pelvis. Um, that will make the back knee bend and that's absolutely fine. Once you've got the tailbone pointing downwards, you can try and straighten that back leg. Really feel it in the hamstrings. Lovely jubbly. Reach your arms forward. And in an exhale, bring the arm, whichever side you're using, that's the same as the leg that's forward. You're going to bring that arm back and the other one forward. So you're in a subtle twist. And with this back hand, if you gently press it back, that will start helping to open that chest, sink as low as you're comfortable to go without um, pushing that knee beyond the ankle. It's strong pose, it's a lovely pose, really opening out. Oh, that feels good in the shoulder as well. You might feel the shakes, that's good. And then just gently reach the arm back up and then step up and then just tread it out, just release any tension. And we'll do the reverse. So whichever foot was forward, that one now goes back. <clears throat> Find the width of stance that feels right to you. Um, and also, the wider it is, the more stable base you'll find. 
So we try and get the posture right first. So tailbone bone pointing downwards and then the back knee. Once your tail is pointing down, you can then straighten that back leg as much as you require, making sure the knee is directly above the um, heel. And that in itself is a good strong stance. You should really feel it in your hamstrings, not hamstrings, your hip flexors. Um, and now we're going to do the same on the other side. So the arm that is the same as the leg, so we'll reach forward, the arm that's the same side as the leg, you're going to sweep down and back, and you're gonna turn your torso, get those arms wide open. And with that back arm, you're gonna press the fingertips forward just to get a little bit more twist in the torso, really feeling it through the shoulder blades. Lovely. Try and stay strong in your lower half. Squeeze up that pelvic floor, squeeze in the belly buttons, push strongly through those feet so you're strong and grounded and stable. And now sweep that back arm down. Coming up and we're going to shift our weight forward to meet both feet. Lovely. So tread that out. So we'll do a little bit of core work now. So going gracefully downwards. There's many ways, but whatever you do, you move slowly. Try this one. Okay, so feet hip width apart. Reach your arms forward. We're going into chair pose. So chair pose is when you're going to sit. It's like skiing. You're going to sit and then you're going to push your weight so that you can see your toes and you're going to keep reaching forwards as a counterbalance and then slowly, slowly, slowly and then at this point, I won't watch, so if nothing graceful happens, I won't know it, but you come down as low as you can, and if you can do it with one hand or no hands, good on you. So we're just going to skew it down and work on our core muscles, um, slowly lower down. So I like yoga. Um, and Pilates for the way they work the core because there's no stress on the lower back as there is often in sort of boot camp style workouts. So right, so the back should always be very, very comfortably pinned into the, onto the mat, nice and secure. We're going into what's often called tabletop knees where your shins are parallel with the ceiling. Already, you might feel a bit of engagement in the lower abs. What we want to do before we start moving anything else, get the core right. So squeeze your abs in and now slightly tuck your pelvis and it will actually move your legs slightly. So tuck your pelvis and what that's doing is really pressing your sacrum into the floor, which is rather than arching up. And particularly if you have any kind of um, spine issues and your back arches up and it gets really uncomfortable, then by really engaging your pelvic floor, that will really help do a bit of correction there and you want to feel your mid back also very firm into the mat so just really squeeze and push your spine into the mat as much as you can whilst maintaining your legs there so have your arms actually let's just make a comfy cradle in our heads if your shoulders don't like that just bring them down along by the side and all we're going to do is a version of um, yogi bicycle so just push one foot forward, okay, can you feel that? So you should feel a little bit of a shake just from doing that. Keep pulling that belly button down, keep crunching that down, okay? So we just bring that back in, take a breath in, and on an exhale, we drive the other foot heel forward. So it's driven through the heel, using your heel, okay? And just maintain that, okay? so. Crunch that in, so really bring your pelvic floor in so that the, as soon as the, you start to get that lower back arch, crunch your pelvic floor and, and try and get that sacrum back safely into that mat. Um, and if you need to soften the knees to stop the arch in the lower back happening, then do that. Do whatever feels right for your back, okay? You don't have to take it to the extreme measure. So to make it full yogi bicycle, we need to lever up our shoulders off the floor so they're not touching. 
Okay, but rest your head comfortably in the mat. Are you shaking? I hope so. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring that top elbow towards the knee, but you want to keep your elbows wide. You don't want to crush your ears. So you're just going to try and think not, not elbow, but shoulder. So you're trying to bring your shoulder, I'm getting the shakes, right, over to that knee. And then gently change. And then bring that shoulder up to the knee. All the time holding those abs in. So we'll do all that on the breath. So breathe in. On an exhale, twist over. Breathe in, exhale, extend, bring that shoulder up, breathe in, exhale, extend shoulder to knee, breathe in, keep those elbows wide, exhale, use your pelvic floor and your belly button muscles, breathe in, exhale, really crunch those abs in, breathe in, exhale, you want another couple? Okay, we'll do another two more then. Breathe in, exhale, extend that heel, shoulder to knee, <laughs> breathe in, extend, exhale, bring that shoulder, crunch those abs in, crunch those abs in, pelvic floor, pelvic floor, and then just slowly release down, hug the knees in. And I think I like about Yogi Bicycle is it's kind of does everything. You can feel the upper, lower ab and your obliques. So now just rolling the spine, hugging it into the mat. Delicious feeling. And reverse direction. Just doing what feels good to you. So at this stage, if this is the end of your practice, um, you can now release down into Shavasana, which is just resting, corpse pose, just releasing everything out. Sometimes I actually prefer, because I've got a dodgy lower back, I actually like to have my feet to the floor and flop my knees in. So just find whatever is your most relaxed pose. Just give yourself even a minute. A minute is nothing out of the rest of your day. If you want to continue on to one of my uh, my evening yoga, then that would be a really nice cool down to finish on if you want to carry on the practice. But otherwise, if you're ending there, have a lovely, lovely day and namaste.